far and away the most challenging of Newton's three laws is his third. And when I took physics, I took it from my father here at Utah State University many years ago, probably in the year 1978. And he stated Newton's third law in a way very, very similar to this, which is superior, honestly, to um, many of the statements that I find for Newton's third law. You may have heard it stated in other ways. I guarantee if you can digest this statement and commit it to memory, then you, you're well on your way to understanding Newton's third law, which I've even found physicists that have trouble with Newton's third law. I said second, I mean third. So here it is. If object A exerts a force, and, and by the way, my father is an excellent teacher. He got the, the USU Professor of the Year Award in 19, 1977, I think it was. If object A, so let's say that this fox is object A, exerts a force of a particular type on object B, then Object B exerts a reaction force of equal magnitude and opposite direction of the same type on object A. So let's look at it. Um, the paws of this uh, fox on the left, fox A, are pushing fox B to the right. So this is the force of A on B. And it's a particular type. Let's just say it's a pushing force. I think we'd probably call it a normal force. Let's just call it a pushing force for now. This fox is pushing on the other fox this direction. What does Newton's third law say? It says then object B will exert a reaction force of equal magnitude and opposite direction of the same type on object A. So that means that this fox, uh, fox B, will exert a force on fox A of equal magnitude, so the same length. If it's 10 Newton force here, it's going to be 10 Newton force here but opposite direction. So it's directed oppositely, and it has the same type. It's a pushing force. That's the basic idea of Newton's third law. We'll do a lot of examples here. Here's a restatement. Well, it's just a replicate of what we saw on the last slide. Let's ask um, about the force of the Earth on the moon, the gravitational force of the Earth on the moon. So this is the force of the Earth on the moon. And we normally draw that force, like I've talked about before, we draw the tail of that force at the center of the object on which the force is acting. So the, for the Earth is exerting a gravitational force F on the moon, which pulls the moon toward it. No big deal. That's something you already knew. What does Newton's third law say? It says that, so in this, in this case, it's ob the Earth is object A and the moon is object B. Then object B exerts a reaction force of equal magnitude in opposite direction of the same type on object A. So this is the force of the moon on the Earth. Now this is a little bit different than you know, we wrote in the last one. We had of F A on B and F B on A, and they were in opposite directions. Certainly these ve these vector arrows are in opposite directions, but I've written this is a minus F. How can I do that? 
And the answer is, back in chapter one, we talked about what the negative of a vector is. It's a concept, I forget which concept it is, but if you have a vector in this direction, its negative is the vector that has the same magnitude, but it's in the opposite direction. Same thing's happening here. Uh, a vector uh, with a certain magnitude to the right, its negative is the same vector, well, a vector with the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So this is, these are equal and opposite forces. This is the colloquial way of talking about Newton's third law. So that's the force of the moon on the Earth. Now you might say, well, hang on here a minute. Are you, uh, are you saying, Dr. Edwards, that the force of the Earth on the moon, that that force that the Earth exerts on the moon is the same? exactly the same in magnitude as the force of the moon on the earth. And I say, yes, they are the same. You say, well, I don't accept that because the moon gets jerked around by the earth and the moon is in orbit around the earth. And my answer to that is, so is the earth in orbit around the moon. You say, how so? And the answer is that the Earth, because of the motion of the moon around the Earth, the Earth is actually doing its own little orbit. It's a smaller orbit. In fact, the center of mass of the Earth-Moon system is right near the surface of the Earth on the side of the Earth closest to the moon. So as the moon rotates over to this other side of the Earth, the Earth is going to rotate uh, over to the other side of that center of mass. So is the moon yanking the earth around? Well, it sure is. And one example is the tides, um, the tidal forces of the moon's gravity on the earth. Those forces are the same. The difference is in the mass. Because the earth is more massive, the acceleration of the earth is less, like we talked about before, than the acceleration of the moon. But the forces themselves are exactly the same. Very important point. Um, here's another example of this uh, forces being equivalent. Suppose that the magnitude of the force exerted by an astronaut on this spacecraft, let's call it P, is 36 newtons. If the mass of the spacecraft is 11,000 kilograms and the mass of the astronaut is 92 kilograms, what are the accelerations of the two? Well. We can apply Newton's laws. We can use faces again. Let's just say we take the x direction in this direction, and we consider the forces on the astronaut. I'm sorry. Let's do the spacecraft first, because we're talking about this force that the astronaut is exerting on the spacecraft. All right sum on forces in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. And we're actually trying to find the accelerations of the spacecraft and the astronaut. Well, to do that, I need to know what forces are exerted on the spacecraft. So remember now the mass here is the mass of the spacecraft. And the forces here are the forces on the spacecraft. We always have to think about what forces are acting on before we can begin to apply Newton's second law. Well, what are the forces acting on the spacecraft? Well, there's just this force P, and its magnitude is 36 newtons. Uh, now we need the mass of the spacecraft. It's 11,000 kilograms. And we need the acceleration of the spacecraft. Well, that'll be 36 newtons over 11,000 kilograms. Newtons are kilogram meters per second squared. The kilograms cancel, and we end up with something in uh, meters per second squared, which is not very big. You can plug the numbers in, and it'll be measured in newtons um, in meters per second squared. And it's going to be a very small acceleration as that 
astronaut pushes on the uh, spacecraft. Let's look at the forces on the astronaut. All right, same equation. Um, the ast uh, we, we forgot to mention the direction of the acceleration of the spacecraft, and it's in this direction. That's the direction that the astronaut's pushing on it. Well, what's the direction of the acceleration of the astronaut? So this is for the spacecraft. The astronaut's going to accelerate in this direction. So let's just for fun and giggles take the x direction, as we talked about in the convention, uh, to be in the same direction as the acceleration. So in that case, then we need the forces on the astronaut. So again, I want the forces on the astronaut, and I want the mass of the astronaut, and then I will end up with the acceleration of the astronaut. Well, what are the forces on this astronaut? The spacecraft, because of Newton's third law, because the astronaut is exerting a 36 Newton force on the spacecraft to the right, the spacecraft must also exert a 36 Newton force on the astronaut to the left. And we're taking x, positive x in this direction, we've got a 36 Newton force of the spacecraft acting on the astronaut. So we just have 36 Newtons. Mass of the astronaut is uh, 92 kilograms. And then the acceleration of the astronaut will be 36 over 92. That says 92, sorry about the. So that's going to be about one third meter per second squared. And this is going to be a whole lot less than one third. Why is that? And, and this will be to the left. And this will be to the right. So this illustrates the idea that the forces can be the same, but um, because of Newton's third law, and they must be the same, but uh, the motions are going to be very, very different. The accelerations will be very, very different. Um, an extreme example is, is here on the Earth. Uh, the Earth is exerting a downward force on me, the force of gravity. I'm also exerting an upward force on the Earth and uh, of gravity. Um, in addition, the Earth exerts a normal force up on me, holding me up. And I exert a normal force down on the Earth. Uh, I once worked out that uh, I used to have a, about a 28-inch vertical leap when I was playing a lot of volleyball. And um, I, I worked out in the process of jumping up 28 inches uh, how much I would push the Earth down. And the answer is about the size of uh, an, an electron, about uh, the size of an atom, as I remember, something like that. But I can push the Earth around, but not a whole lot. Even, even though the force, the gravitational force that the Earth exerts down on me is equal to the gravitational force, the force itself, they're the same magnitudes, the force that I exert upward on the Earth. 